Hey guys, how you doing? Alex here and welcome back to another video. Thankfully for me as a Swindon Town fan, the League 2 season is almost over and that means it's time to talk about the League 2 team of the season which just came out this weekend just gone. In this video I'll be reacting to the team of the season as well as giving my own personal team of the season. Let's get into it. Let's take a look at the team of the season then. This is what the EFL has gone for. They've gone for Lawrence Vigarou of Late Noreen in goal. Definitely agree with that one. He's had most clean sheets in the leagues. Been absolutely outstanding. Made some crucial saves for Late Noreen as well. I remember at the start of the season, he was saving penalties left, right and centre as Late Noreen took control of the division and never let it out of their grasp. And they've stormed to the title now and, and fair play to them. ex Swindon Town player as well. Always liked Viggs when he's with us. He's a Swindon Town, bit of a legend. Um, so yeah, fair play, Vigru. He was also in my team this season, so totally agree with that one. In the defence, it gets a little bit more controversial. Um, they've gone for Chumadeu of Colchester, who also won the Young Player of the Season Award at right back. Um, and with respect... No, he is not not the right back of the season, is he? he? Just isn't. He plays for Colchester for a start. It's been shocking. Um, fair enough that he's won young player of the season. He's nineteen years old, I think now, and he only just turned nineteen during the season. And he's got very impressive um five goals and two assists over the season, which is is very good. So fair play to him, young player of the season. But he's not right back of the season, is he? He just, he just isn't. Like, this is the only position in the team where I think Swindon Town could have really had an argument to have a player in there. Um, Romeo Hutton has got 12 assists in the league this season, which is more than not just any player in the league, but more than any player in the whole EFL, more than any player in the Premier League, more than any player in Europe's top five leagues. So Romeo Hutton is definitely a shout for right back of the season. However, he's not... In my team of the season, um, as I can't really stomach putting a Swindon Town player in team of the season after the year that we've had, I went for Kyle Noyle of Stockport County, um, another former Swindon Town player. I think he's been fabulous. He started the season with Doncaster and was their best player in what was a terrible season for them. But then he went to Stockport in January and really kind of fired them on. He's done really well for them. He's got into double figures for goal contributions this season and been part of a Stockport County side, which has been super, super impressive in their in their first year back in league football. And and I think a Stockport County player needs to be in this team of the season. Um, they've been left out of the EFL team of the season. Um, and I think you, you've got to have them represented. So I would have gone Kyle Noyle at right back. Moving on to the centre-backs then. EFL have gone for Pierre Gianni, totally agree. Um, Steve Nidge, probably player of the season for them. He's been outstanding. Um, check out my vlog when I went to watch Steve Nidge a few weeks back against Salford. Um, I spoke to Steve Nidge fans and they said he was probably their outstanding player. He scored a lot of important goals for them as well as being solid at the back after joining in the summer from Oldham. Um, and he's also in my team this season. But then they've gone for Salford's Torre at centre-back, which I think was... You know, a little bit strange. I wouldn't have really had him in there. Um, Salford haven't been particularly incredible defensively. They've been strong, don't get me wrong, but there are definitely better teams. Like, for example, you know, Carlisle, Bradford have been very strong. Um, and it means that Beckles has been shoved out to the left. So Beckles, late annoyance, centre-back. Um, he's He's been amazing this season. I personally, in terms of the players I've seen live this season, when I'm watching Swindon Town, I'd say Beckles is probably you know the top centre-back that I've seen play against Swindon this year. Um, and I had him partnering Pier Gianni in the central defence in my team, but they've shoved him out to left-back to accommodate Torre, which I don't think really makes any sense. So I think, I think that's an odd one um, to put Torre in there. My left-back was going to be Jack Armour from Carlisle United. Um, he's been ever-present in their team, a side that's really shocked us all, one of the many teams that's shocked us all this season. Um, t Paul Simpson's gone into Carlisle and turned them from a team that were struggling towards the bottom of the division into a team that could still get promoted, albeit probably not automatically, um, this season. Um, and Jack, it, Jack Armour's been ever-present. He scored a few goals as well. So I think Jack Armour, probably left-back of the season, 
Um, eight goals and assists, can't really argue with it. And there's been no other outstanding candidate, really. I mean, you had a few right-back options, but for left-back, I've seen Matty Folds of Bradford mentioned, um, but not really too many players. And as you can tell, because EFL have not listed a left-back, they've just stuck in a centre-back at left-back. So, um, so yeah. Um, moving on to the midfield then. Um, I totally agree with this one. No, no mistakes here from what I've, from what I can see. Um, what from Salford's been absolutely outstanding. If you look at the stats, he dominates in terms of the passing stats, possession stats. He's he's just had an incredible season from start to finish. Um, Moxon from Carlisle United, unbelievable signing for them. He in terms of his goal contribution, goal contributions, goals and assists, he's he's been really important for Carlisle and. Along with Dennis, um, he is he has been their shining light this season. The reason why they've done so well, um, and then the final member of that midfield, Idris El Mizuni, um, one of Late Orient star players. This team is always going to be full of Late Orient players because of how well they've done this season, how much they've dominated um, from start to finish. And um, I speak to a Late Orient fan quite often at work, and and he's a big fan of this kid. He's going to have a big future, and he's and he's been um, amazing um, at Late Orient this season. So yeah, no problems with with the midfield there. Finally, onto the attack. So where it gets interesting, this is probably always the hardest to choose um, for the season. Um, but there are two players that are surely in everyone's team of the season, and that is Cook, who will be centre forward, the Bradford um, centre forward, who's top goal scorer in the division. He's been fabulous when he's not been playing Swindon Town this season. Um, another two goals at the weekend, um, so no real arguments there. He was up front for me as well. Sam Hoskins takes the right wing position. Um, he's won EFL League Two player of the season, which I think, again, is, is probably the right call. Um, he scored about eight goals in like the first month and a half of the season and it's it's just been absolutely phenomenal for Northampton um and definitely their player of the season in a in a team that has always been up in the top three for basically the whole season so no real complaints there my complaint is however the fact that they've put Pinnock another Northampton town player at left wing in this team which was I was not expecting at all. I think it's a complete shock. Northampton Town fans, you know, you obviously see him a lot more than me. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and I think he was pretty good against Swindon Town when, when we played you guys at the county ground towards the start of the season. But I was not expecting to see Pinnock in this team. Um, I'd have to check his stats and stuff, but I, I definitely wasn't thinking him. I was thinking um, Paul Smith from Late Noint. Again, as I said, I speak to Late Orient fans a lot, and and a lot of them say that he is their player of the season. So Late Orient, the team that won the league, surely their best player should be in the team of the season. So I I think clearly Paul Smith deserves a deserves a place in in this team. Um, it's rather strange that he's been he's been overlooked here, um, and and I think it makes sense that you need to have this team basically full of Late Orient players because of how impressive they've been. Um, the EFL here, how many have we got? We've only got three um, players in there. Okay, to be fair, I only have four in mine. Um, so let's take a look at mine now. So my team of the season for League 2 will be Vigoro in goal, Kyle Noy right back, Beckles Piergiani in the centre of defence, Armour left back from Carlisle, out of the same midfield of Watt, Moxon, El Mazzuni in midfield, and then Hoskins, Cook and Smith as the front three no Swindon Town players, obviously. Some Swindon Town fans will say, oh, but Romeo Hutton should be in there, 12 assists. And yeah, he's done incredibly well. Um, but from the defensive side of the game, he's just been so poor. And his crossing is actually incredibly inconsistent if you watch him a lot. So he's done, he's done really well. He's got a lot of assists, but he's been very frustrating to watch and has gone through very poor periods this season. So... I think it would be a bit of a joke if Swindon Town actually managed to get a player in team of the season after the year that we've had. Um, so moving on to the individual awards then. So as I mentioned before, the young player of the season was Shumadeu from Colchester. And whilst I have a problem with him being in team of the season, I think fair enough, young player of the season. Um, Swindon Town's Jake Wakeling was also in the running for this award, who's done incredibly well um, in his first proper season playing um, professional men's football. But I think his seasons maybe weighted towards the start of the season where he did really well. And then for ages, he didn't really do anything. Although he has been playing out of position for, for a long period of time. 
Um, so I think next season he's going to really kick on. Hopefully he can play in the centre of attack. He can play out front in a front two, hopefully with a with a bigger player supporting him. Uh, he's been forced out wide this season and has done really well. Um, but yeah, Shumadeo, Young Player of the Year, agree with that. Player of the season, Hoskins, yeah, I agree with that as well. He's He's been outstanding. He's not been the top scorer in the division, so you could argue that Cook or um, or Smith um, from Lake Norwin could be player of the season, given that Smith is Lake Norwin's best player and Lake Norwin won the league. Um, but no, I think Hoskins has done some outstanding things, scored some corners, um, some, some ridiculous goals, so I think fair play to him. Um, and then the manager of the season. So the EFL gave this to Richie Wellens, former Swin and Town manager, and has now won the League Two title for a second time, but this time with Leighton Orient. Um, I love Richie Wellens. Would have really loved him to come back last season to Swindon Town, um, but it didn't happen. Leighton Orient nabbed him, and he has had incredible success with them. Um, I think he's linked with the Blackpool job as well. Um, as I record this and I think that would be a very good appointment for Blackpool he was linked with them again when he was at Swindon Town and he's had a fabulous season however he wouldn't have got the award um, if I was, if it was down to me he wouldn't have got the award I would have had Steve Evans of Stevenage as manager of the season um, a manager that I'm not personally a huge fan of or wasn't a huge fan of before this season but I just think the transformation that he's that he's had at Stevenage has been absolutely remarkable. You know, a team that at the start of the season I predicted to be about nineteenth because they're always fighting relegation, they're always just just good enough to stay in the league. And he's turned them into a team that, okay, fell short in terms of the title race and, you know, as as we record this, still kind of in the mix about whether they'll actually get automatically promoted. Yeah, I think they will get automatically promoted and, and it would be an absolute miracle of a turnaround if he's able to achieve that. Um, also shout out to Simpson of Carlisle who's done the exact same thing, turned a relegation fighter into into a promotion candidate. Unbelievable. John Brady at Northampton, um, obviously overcoming the disappointment of missing out on the final day of last season um, to Bristol Rovers for automatic promotion, then losing in the playoffs, but then bringing that team back and it looks like they're going to go up in second place um, from League 2 this season um, but Steve Evans, I think that just the overall job that he's done at Stevenage has is, is been absolutely insane and remarkable. And so I would have given it to big Stevie Evans. So that's it for today's video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Let me know down below who would make your team of the season. I'm very interested to hear different fans' perspectives on this. Um, but thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time.